I think like any category, there is space for the challenge of brand within that category. Because if you're a challenger, that's what it's all about. It's not actually so much about David versus Goliath. It's not so much about calling out the big guy, getting really noisy, sticking your nose in their face and, and winning. The fact that you're number two or number three or number four or number five does not make you a challenger. That makes you number two, three or four or five. What makes you a challenger is recognizing that your business ambitions are bigger than your marketing resources. The sort of things that we've been doing is to break world records, which no other human beings have managed to do so far. We succeed about 50% of the time over those years. We never got bored because Charlie on the left had a solar panel which gave us enough power to listen to the BBC World Service for two minutes a day if there was radio reception. And one day with his headsets on, Charlie said, the United Kingdom is at war. So I said, who with? And he said, oh, I didn't get that bit. Uh, <laughs> we sat for five days of bad radio reception arguing who the hell it could be. I mean, obviously we assumed that it was France, but we had no proof. <laughs> I don't think you've even scratched the surface of the power that humans have got. If you ask me the biggest innovation that I've ever been involved with at the Eden Project, it was to dust down a very old thing, and it's called trust. When we started to do Eden, everybody told me, Tim, you know, the Heligan Gardens, it was a great success, but you're a little guy, and this is a big project, 144 million pounds. It's going to be late. It's going to go over budget, and you're going to, your reputation is going to be in tatters. And I was worrying about this until my eldest son turned to me and said, but Dad, you haven't got a reputation. And that kind of cheered me up, you know? And 